Welcome to the Editor's Note Comics Podcast. Nobody's walking out on this fun old-fashioned family Christmas. No, no, we're all in this together. Central Maine's best comics podcast, by default. Fragile. It must be Italian. Here are your hosts, Zach and Jared. I didn't know you had elves working here. It's Christmas, bitch. Hey, we're back again. It's Christmas time. Did everyone survive the snowpocalypse? We got like half... Oh, wait, you mean tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, I'm so messed up by our schedule. I'm not going to release this early. You weren't? No. That's no. why I was acting like we're in the consistency, future. Consistency, man. Yeah, we're recording a little early. Jared's schedule is kind of messing us up. And what do you mean it's my schedule? I, we don't want... Are we not allowed to have a life outside of the show? No, you have a life one hour a week. Sometimes a little less, sometimes a little more. That's it. That's the only time I'm allowed to have a life. That's, that's all you is get. It's when I come and hang out in your basement and watch you cry and yell um, and scream um, at two um, separate laptops. Three. Three separate laptops. Three separate laptops. Two separate microphones. Unless you count the internals and then it's four. And that partridge Wait, in a pear six. tree. Oh my god. You know what you should do? You should ask Santa for some really good podcast equipment. Look, man, I got good podcast equipment. I you, looked, bought, you downloaded free cheap software. Invest a uh, little bit. Get a, little, get a mixer for the microphones, and, and it's, it's doable. I've invested a few hundred just for the current setup we have. And how is that treating you? Well, he, look, it's a long, boring story. The short version is the computer. Every, uh, every Tuesday night, you're here. I figured it out this week. Next Tuesday night, it's a totally different setup. And for 20 minutes, every Tuesday night, how you figured it out ends in you screaming, yelling, weeping, and drinking. Not uh, necessarily in that order. Uh, one causes the others. <laughs> uh, but we're here. We are. We have a setup. We're here to report on all the news that's fit to print on the interwebs. That's, that's really no limit. Yeah, no kidding. Do we have an anecdote other than my general frustration at sound quality? I can't get the 21 minutes I spent earlier in your living room back. <laughs> we'll talk about what that's, happened later that's in the for show. later. Yeah. No, I don't. I, I got nothing. This has been kind of a nasty... Well, it's, only been, been, it's only been a couple of days since I've been we last recorded. Sick, and I'm going to be loopy tonight. I'm, well, I went to bed around 1.30 and I woke up at 5 and I just couldn't fall back asleep. I'm like, well... I'm awake now. I mean, well, I got like 12 hours of sleep. Um, I never get that much sleep, though. It's, like, <laughs> it's nice to be able to catch up once in a while. And I've also been sick all week. This is the first day I haven't been sick. It kind of I was like so excited like about not being sick, I woke up. And you maximized your day. Yeah. All right. Let's do that thing we do called the NBC Nightly News. But that got roasted wait. really, really hard tonight on Twitter, by the way. Oh, I, wait. I'm assuming that's copyright. The Editor's Note Comics Weekly News. World Press. International. I feel like that's also a real thing. Daily Bugle. That's probably, can't do that. Let's get people's hopes up with news. Yay. Before we get started, does anyone want to get out? It's time for the news. Spider-Man Homecoming has a sequel. The trailer just dropped. Yeah, and then they dropped a sequel date on us. Atta boy. July 5th, 2019. Real American. Right after the 4th of July. It doesn't get much closer than that to the 4th of July. Well, July 3rd. Okay, you got me there. At 11.59. And 59 seconds. Booyah! Yeah, that's about as close as you get. To the, yeah, to the surprise of no one, Spider-Man's getting a sequel. Whoever would have guessed that Marvel's flagship character would get a sequel? Uh, Are you shocked? No. No. But the last time Spider-Man had a bunch of sequels in the work, it got canned. True. Hard. This one will be fine. They must have real high feelings and high thoughts on Spider-Man Homecoming. I think they do. Which the trailer, which we'll talk about shortly, looks fantastic. You know, I'm going to stay on the side of Spider-Man. This is a really weird headline. They're like... Tom Holland enrolls in high school. Okay? Good for him. Yeah. <laughs> like, Make something of yourself, young man. Good good for that high school age kid. But what it was is Tom Holland, the young boy slash man who is playing Peter Parker. I guess he enrolled um, in a New York high school for three days. 
Oh. Just to get a feel for the vibe, how to project it. Did he meet some uh, young lady uh, Young lady with red hair? They're like, oh, is your name Mary Jane? Why, yes, it is. Mm-hmm. I'm Peter Parker. And then she like slaps him around a little bit. I'm yeah. going to guess by thought... the, your nod, that's a no. No. I just thought it was like, Tom Holland in roles in high school. I'm like, yeah. He's high school age. Well, in case this acting thing doesn't work out for him. <laughs> Get your GED, young man. Atta boy, make something of yourself. It's sad. I mean, we're not that old, but then we see people much younger than us that are far, far more successful. Eh. I dealt with that a long time ago. Eh. You know that Justice League movie? I've heard of it. It's referred to as the Justice League movie. There were rumors of that. It has a sequel called Justice League 2 Electric Boogaloo in Space. Ooh. Not actually called that. Oh. Um, Is it Justice League movie 2? Could be. Who the hell knows? Justice League movie part 2. Look, given how bad the Batman v Superman Dawn of Too Many Titles was, who the hell knows what it's going to be called? Dawn of Too Many Titles. Yeah. But. Uh, the sequel has been delayed to make room for Ben Affleck's solo Batman movie. That's fine. Zack Snyder's had three go rounds, or he will have had three at that point. Three. Take take a break. Give him a little rest. Yeah, give let, him a little snooze. Let good old Benny come on in, fix ben, the upright. Ben Affleck, Boston Batman. Boston. <laughs> it is. It's Boston Batman. Is he a bad driver? Does he swear at people? Is he from Southie? <laughs> Is Affleck from Southie? I don't think Affleck is from Southie. Maybe. Back check the show. Don't get, care. Get it out of the way. That's how it goes every week. Back check the show. Don't care. I do it anyway. Because I never will. Somebody's got to bring integrity uh, to this show, and it certainly well, isn't you. I, I thought you meant DC. I'm like, yeah, no kidding. Because <laughs> um, they brought in Jeff Johns, but even so, there's going to be some time they need to course correct. Even for movies that are in development, you can't. It's like, well, we've already finished principal photography. Jeff, come on in. What can we do here? Ben Affleck was born in Berkeley, California. My whole life is a lie. Uh, personal life. I don't know anything about Boston. No, eh, I guess it's all a lie. I'm sure it's somewhere in there, but I'm not no, gonna. No, it's look. a lie. I'm not gonna look for it too much. He's a California boy. Well, I mean, he he loves the Red Sox and the Patriots and the Celtics. So, anyway. There's, there's something to it somewhere, but... but... Yeah, Justice League 2 will get delayed for a solo Batman movie, which, if it's good, great. It really, I don't really have a preference. I mean, I'd, I want to see all these movies now, but I want them all to be good. So you're willing to wait a little bit? Just make a good movie, DC. You've really... Three strikes, and I'm still going to see everything else you do, and then probably complain about it on the internet. But, ultimately, you're still giving their money, so... They're going to continue to turn out the product that they're turning out when they're making hundreds of millions of dollars per film, so. But they're not cracking, yeah, there's still millions. They haven't cracked that B yet. Ah, that's a good point. Powerless is a show going to be premiering on NBC this February. What is Powerless, you ask? It's what you are when you don't pay the electric bill. Bad job following. You, you what is Powerless, you, Zach? You didn't follow my lead. Um, it's a dumb sounding show. I'm sorry. It's a show that's going to be about insurance adjusters in the DC universe who have to deal with the fallout from major battles. That actually, I think, would be interesting as like a skit, but not a show. It sounds dumb. It is dumb. I, I'll give it two episodes. What if it's really funny? Then I'll watch it. Is that it just supposed like... to be like a sitcom? Is yeah. it supposed to be funny? Yes. It's like how long? Half hour? Yeah. This is the first like comedy show coming out of comics. I might, you know what? I'm. I'll give it two. I'm intrigued. Usually, my because rule... I'm often <sighs> on the show. Have we talked about that? <laughs> like people making claims, like Thor dropped <laughs> on my house. He was really handsome, but but <laughs> I have no fucking roof. <laughs> Things um didn't go well. Yeah. Usually, my rule for shows is I. I try and give shows four episodes. If you haven't hooked me by four, I'll drop you. You're only going to give this one two? I think I can. I'll give this one two. It sounds so dumb. Oh, come on. you got to give it four. But it has Alan Tudyk. That's you, the only... God, I, I like So Tudyk. you've got to... You can't adjust your rule. You've got to stick to your rule. I don't want to. Because the first dumb. couple episodes are world building anyway. 
Yeah, name the number of good first episodes in any TV show. So let's say Anarchy had a really good first episode. Mythbusters, where they watched that car with a rocket. You know the first that episode of Mythbusters? Yeah. 17 seasons. Yeah, I know the first one. Yeah. Oh, I do. Because when they had the last episode, they like talked about all the episodes in the first episode. And uh, in the last season, they went back and... Um, the fact that you know they were like, were there 17 seasons of Mythbusters? I think so. Oh. Back check the show. I'm going to say I'm right. Even if I prove <clears throat> you wrong. Okay. Even if I bust you. If I myth bust you. Actually, that sounds really, really weird. Last bit of news before we get into our trailer breakdowns. What that's the hell the, was that? That's breaking down the trailer. No, well, that wasn't anything. You were, you were a choo-choo train. Richard E. Grant's character in the upcoming Logan movie. I haven't really talked about it, mostly because it was all theoretical. We didn't know who he was. I had a theory. I was wrong. 15, uh, 15 seasons. 15, that was close. Not bad. Richard E. Grant will be playing Dr. Xander Rice. I bought rice today <clears> at the <throat> supermarket. Uncle Ben! Uncle Ben is, is gone. But yeah, no, I had a theory about who he was going to be. I, was, I wasn't that far off base, but I was wrong. Dr. Xander Rice is one of the scientists responsible for cloning Wolverine and making X-23, who we know we're going to see in the movie. Little lady Wolverine. Good for Dr. Xander Rice. On the cutting edge of mutant cloning. <laughs> cloning men into women and then making them teenagers. Now that you put it like that, it's a little awkward. <laughs> it's really a lot for the mind to process. And changing claws from hands to feet. Because she has... um. Two claws in her hands, and then one that shoots out of her foot. Oh, what if she like stubs her toe, or something? Um, then she'll cut it in half because she has a claw. So whatever she like hits, we'll just get. What if she like runs into her cat, and her little like toe claws out? Then the cat is dead. Oh, uh, that sucks for the cat. You doing okay with your cat? I feel like this is. Like... No, I love my cat. <laughs> like, what if you killed the cat? I would be petrified if my cat were dead. No, your, your cat would be petrified if your cat were dead. That's a good point. It's a very good point. <laughs> I would be very upset. Also, wintertime would be the worst time because I'd want to bury my cat on my on my property. Oh, so you wouldn't want to pay for it? Or I could. I mean, I maybe I'd get it cremated. You're probably right. <laughs> Just, but then it'd be weird to have a little cat urn of like cat ashes. This is a really dark and morbid turn to the show right now. You can get cat cat urns? Yeah, absolutely, you can. Weird. You can get them for dogs too. You've never seen that. I no, I'm not gonna get urns for pets. People do it, and they put the collar around the urn. Oh yeah, that's a thing. It's a very real thing. The only reason I would do that is because my cat does have a skull and crossbones collar. It's foreshadowing. <laughs> no, he's just super metal. Are you just saying your cat's never gonna die? No, he's he's just hardcore. He he's so hardcore. <laughs> he doesn't want milk. He wants green alcohol. <laughs> It's like, my skull and crossbones glows in the dark. Metal, 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 Do they metal. really glow in the dark? Yeah, it does. Oh, wow. Do you see him kind of prancing around with his little glow in the dark at night? He doesn't prance. He headbangs. Do you see it? Because he's metal. Do you see it, though, in the dark? Yeah, you do. Oh, wow. So you know where he is. Well, that and the little jingly bell. Yeah, it's like the bell really helps identify where he is at night. Fair enough. See, my um, cat, he doesn't need a collar. He's that BA. He doesn't wear a collar. Did try to put him a harness once, and <laughs> you failed miserably. I remember I walked him over to your apartment. We were living next door to each other, and really by walk him, I meant dragged, and then carried him because I didn't want to drag him because he was making a fuss. And then he hid under your porch for twenty minutes. <laughs> and you took him, yeah. But you know what we got this week? Trailers. Yeah, we got all kinds of trailers. Dos traileros. Let's start with the one that is like the interesting one. No, well, let's end with the really good one. You don't know which one I meant. Let's end with the one that people really care about. <laughs> Keep it on the show. Like, yeah. You're going to listen. You're going to listen to my thoughts on things. Damn straight. First trailer, we'll talk about War, Planet of the Apes. What is it good for? Planet of the Apes. Yeah. That's not breaking coffee, right? Ha <laughs> ha. I beat you, band whose name I can't remember. Didn't War, wasn't that by the band War? I have no... That can't be right. Time to fact check the show again. I'm not going to do it. Oh, Planet of the Apes. This is the third Planet of the Apes movie. I like these movies. You said you haven't seen them? I haven't. All right. Guess we're going to have a... Oh, it's Edwin Starr. 
We're going to have a good conversation about monkeys again. Can we please talk about this album cover, though? What is going on there? Peace. Yeah, but there's a guy with, like, a lightsaber spoon and a guy wearing, like, a shield and helmet. Have you seen any of the Planet of the Apes movies? I saw the original. So have I. Did you see any of the sequels? I saw some of the Mark Wahlberg one, but... Well, okay, that, that's not a sequel. I saw that in theaters. It's terrible. But I, did you see any of the uh, sequels of the Charlton Heston one? No. Me either. Uh, so I can't... <laughs> I have nothing to say on those. Uh, the original is fine. Good monkey makeup at the time. Charlton Heston just yells randomly. That's My a... favorite was the stage adaptation starring uh, Troy McClure. <laughs> Dr. Zayas, Dr. Zayas. Dr. Zayas, 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 there we go. Can I play the piano anymore? Of course you can. Well, I couldn't before. Yes. Uh, Planet of the Apes got rebooted. I think it was 2011. There's been two movies so far. Rise of the Planet of the Apes, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Now we're moving on to War of the Planet of the Apes. These are good movies. Go watch these movies. In all seriousness, they're really good. Well, I may have a snow day tomorrow, so. They're really good. I like them a lot. Although people are going to listen on Wednesday and be like, oh, snow day on Thursday? No, no. This is (laughs) Sunday night. Yeah. I I mean, they're both, they are really great movies. The trailer opens up. We see some monkeys on a beach on horseback, which I think is supposed to be reminiscent, yeah, of the first film. That really, that stuck out to me. I've seen Uh, seen the original. Of Heston going up, finding the Statue of Liberty. So far, these movies have had, like, the weird twist ending. Oh, yeah. Damn you all to hell! You damn dirty apes. Well, that was in the middle, though. Wrong part, yeah, wrong part of yeah, the movie. Yeah, so I still like the idea. Damn you! <laughs> damn you all to hell! You ruined it! You can pry this gun from my cold... Wrong thing. No, he's just... Yeah, well, he's dead now, and his <laughs> hands are probably cold. And dead. Yes. So the main monkey is Caesar, played by Andy Serkis. Known for playing Gollum and also a monkey in King Kong. Yes, was it? He was just in uh, something else too. He's been in a lot of things. Yes, I mean. Oh, he, he's uh, Snoke. Yeah, he's Snoke. He was Claw in the Avengers. He was also a chef in King Kong, along with being King Kong. Andy Circus. He was in the Prestige. Oh. Playing the assistant to uh, Bowie. Really. Helping out yeah, Wolverine. Ah, yeah, yeah. uh, yes. All the characters' names. Bowie, Wolverine, Gollum. So it seems like his faction is now carrying guns. We see that the humans have maintained a military force. But it also looks like there might be some apes that are helping the humans out. We see a line of humans that are captured. And there's an ape that's also with them who's kind of crouched in front. Like, don't kill me! Don't kill one of your own. Good point. Good point. It, also, I think that's going to be towards the end of the movie because we also see that ape later in the trailer helping to load ammo up. There's a lot of a lot of fighting in this trailer. Woody Harrelson's shaving his head bald. Yep. Like um, uh, in uh, Apocalypse Now. Remember? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Brando, his character. What was his character's name? Fat Brando. That wasn't his character's name in that. It was, um, I want to say Kilgore. No, nope, that's wrong. Um, I think he has a dead son. We see a shot of him holding a pitcher, and there's a bloody oh, yeah, that's flask, and he has some ape skulls on his desk, so maybe his kid was killed by apes. And inside the base that he seems to be running, you see, like, slogans written up, like, keep fear to yourself. Share courage. Yeah. All right. Maybe behind that a little bit. Um, there seems to be some kind of ape. It lo- almost looks like an A. There's a symbol that's been spray-painted on the American flag. And it looks like there's a lot of cages on their military base, presumably meant for apes. Apes. Ape cage. Sorry, I'm distracted because I wanted to look up that the uh, character um, from Apocalypse Now. Kurtz. Colonel Kurtz. Yep. But there's not a lot. This is the first trailer for War of the Planet of the Apes. It looks They've all been good. Just see the damn movie. Looks like there's a lot of gunfight. A lot of shooting. Yeah. The Guys last... in a cage. Look, do you want to... The last one had like... A monkey wielding dual machine guns, riding a horse, firing them simultaneously. That's pretty badass. Yeah. Think? When you say it like that, that kind of gets my attention. <laughs> they're they're good movies. Good use of the term dual wielding. <laughs> you gonna play some Halo after this? We're moving on. Spider Man, Spider Man, <laughs> climbing up the Washington Monument. Yes. 
Weird that Peter Parker is in Washington, D.C. Um, I think it's like the first time we like see Peter Parker not in New York. We see plenty of them in New York. So what we got originally, I think it was 16 seconds, we got a teaser to the teaser that showed John Favreau giving Peter Parker a suit, and it was all um, from his point of view, so we see that it was an original costume. So it looks like we're going to have some pre-Civil War stuff in here. Ooh. I don't know how much, or how it's going to work in exactly. I don't think it's going to be, like, cutting back and forth. I think it'll probably, like, him... It almost looks like a Kim Day dreaming in school when he's watching YouTube videos of him fighting Ant-Man. Perhaps. By the way, this trailer was awesome. It's, yeah, the movie looks good. Um, this so, trailer was probably better than Batman v Superman was as an entire film. Yeah. <laughs> we can do an entire show on that. Like, movies where the trailer looked good, movie was terrible. There was a ton of Tony Stark in this trailer. I could be though. like, Phantom Menace. Fantastic Four 2. 1994 Fantastic Four. Nope, that trailer looked awful. It's clobbering time. So, we see a bunch of weapons. These are probably being made from the Tinkerer, who we know is going to be in this movie. The Tinkerer was, I believe, in the second issue of Spider-Man. So he goes way back, even though he's a relatively minor. Mm. Uh, we see a bunch of robbers in Avengers Mask robbing the Queen's Community Bank. So we know he's sticking to Queens. Yes. In Staten Island. I also thought that was a funny way to open it. Like, you guys aren't the real Avengers. Thor gave it away. He said Hulk. Hulk. Um, I did one of those things in trailers that I really hate. Like, where there's a lot of the cutting to black. And there's like... Like, every time one of the thugs throws a punch, it's like this big, like... He's just... He's whiffing air. There's no noise. It's just a guy like... Yeah, what punch you but instead of the trail's like doo, 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 doo. Wait, that noise you just made, the eh, I wanna punch you in the face. You said that to the laptop about thirty five <laughs> minutes ago, forty minutes ago. <laughs> to Audacity. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I wanna <laughs> punch you in the face. Audacity, if you were a person, I'd very much like I'd, a, I'd give you a glare. Very much when they were like Was that last week or two weeks ago? I don't even know anymore. It was two weeks ago. Um, I like that they're doing kind of the Deadpool thing, and we saw this in Civil War. We're going to have the eyes being expressive. He's like, whoa, that was awesome, and his eyes kind of bug out. Mm. Not like in a Beetlejuice kind of way. No. Uh, we do get some relatively obscure, well, not obscure if you've read the books, but we do get, at least for those who have only watched the movies, somewhat obscure characters. We see Liz Allen, where Peter is creepily watching her walk through the hall. <laughs> Liz Allen is a character that Peter had a crush on, and then she had a crush on Peter, but they never really got together. And then she married Harry Osborne and had a kid with him, and then he went, you know, crazy. And then she was like, my baby! But, yeah, we'll see Liz Allen. She has, you know, she has a relatively big history within Spider-Man. What there was, though, in this, a ton of Tony Stark. There was. Shows up. He hugs a minor. That's weird. Well, he's, oh, no, he's like, oh, no, I'm just opening the door for you. <laughs> I like that. Um, it's like, don't do what I would do, but don't do what I wouldn't do. A little bit of gray area there. I do like him being, I mean, he's going to help connect all the movies. But I also think it's funny where he's like, do I have to like audition to be an Avenger? I'm like, what Avengers? No one's left. It's like Tony and the Vision. That's not a team. Yeah. Everyone else is gone or had a massive spinal injury. That's true. I do like Vision, though. Vision is awesome. I know, but there's, there is no Avengers at this point. Like, no one's left. Everyone quit or joined an opposing team. The new Avengers. Yeah. Or they might be the secret Avengers. But either way, I'm like, what Avengers are left? It's not a very right. good secret if they are broke out of prison. And thank you, Twitter, for showing me this. I think it was a Spider-Man writer who retweeted this so I didn't have to actually find it myself. Oh. Thanks. Um, we do see the John Slattery version of Howard Stark painted on a mural in Peter's high school. It's like important figures in history. Oh, kind of okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. And we also see an image of Bruce Banner in a science classroom of like important scientists in history. Like, boy, sure is good that someone got that picture of Bruce Banner from Age of Ultron where it's just a shot from that movie. I always hate that. Will they just take a, a clip from the movie? Well, there's always like, I'm looking at this picture of this character who's not here. It's just a shot from a movie. Or if they're like, replay that security footage, and it's just like the movie. I'm like, 
Why does that security footage have five different camera angles? Like in the first Avengers movie when Tony throws up all of the... Actually, that's a good example. Thank you. Or even in this movie where Peter's watching himself on YouTube, I'm like, huh, who was filming that? That's a really good angle of him swinging around Giant Man. That's a really good point. That airport had a lot of security cameras, a lot of angles. <laughs> and thank God someone found all that footage and spliced it together appropriately to make it as cinematic as possible. But see, this is why I hate watching movies with you. Because it's like little things like that. Like, oh, I remember that. <laughs> Nostalgia. You're like, bullshit. <laughs> How did you do that movie? No one was there. I accept that you have security cameras. I also love that you talk to the movie in the third person. Like, fuck you, movie. Or, oh, good job, movie. Movie, what are you doing? Oh, no, no, movie. You won't fool me this time. <laughs> the, the movie is a living, breathing being. The movie's on your naughty list. I'm seeing this is... See? That's my note. Where'd that camera come from? <laughs> Exclamation point. Uh, we see a lot of Star Wars toys in either Peter's room or potentially his friend's room. It is a very different looking room, so it could be his friends. It doesn't look like Peter's from Civil War. Well, he he does... has um, he has an AT-AT. There is an X-Wing, a Lego Death Star, and then what looks like in the background, it's kind of blurry. It looks like a bunch of individual Star Wars figures. Nice little piece of crossover there. You got your wish. There's your Star Wars... Avengers crossover. Well, he, he made the AT-AT joke in Civil War. He's like, you guys know in that old movie how they took out the real, yeah. those things? That thing that I have a toy of in my room and I don't know the and name of? Empire Strikes Back. Where'd you find this guy? I didn't carbon date him. <laughs> I don't hang out with miners. Shut up. Well, I mean, I did like, uh, you, you meet his friend. His friend's like, you were crawling on the ceiling. No, I wasn't. But I also like it shows how the suit, like kind of like is skin tight. He pushes the button and it kind of relaxes off yep. of him. Like I said, we do see Peter in D.C. It looks like there's some kind of attack there. We also see him with Tony walking into the Avengers Tower, which I thought was kind of neat. We see um, Happy Hogan behind him. Mm -hmm. And then what looks like potentially, um, I know I didn't spoil this before, but at this point I decided I don't care. It looks like what we see, the Shocker without his mask on, he has the kind of tech that we see in the beginning of the trailer of the like glowy... Yeah. Stuff just if you look at the um, jacket that he's wearing compared to the set photos that we saw, it looks like that's how the shocker comes into being. We see Peter fighting the vulture, played by Michael Keaton, later on the trailer. It uh, doesn't look like he has his suit from Tony anymore. He has and, his new suit. No, he has his old suit. Oh, the old suit, like the old cloth one. Oh. And I think what this is going to be, and I'm just going off of um, first Civil War comic. Peter was running around what was referred to as the Iron Spider, and then he went against Tony, and Tony had all the tech for the suit, and he just shut it down. So I'm assuming that's what we're going to see here, that Tony is going to shut the tech down like we've seen in the comics before. Well, and Tony Peter... keeps telling him, like, people, there are people who take care of this. Like, you know, you need to be in high school. You don't need to be out fighting crime. But then he's, like, jumping up and down in a hotel room bed, which I'm assuming is in D.C. Hmm. But that's my guess is that um, Tony will shut his suit down like he did in Civil War with the Iron Spider suit, and then Peter will have to go back to his old suit and fight the Vulture and crawl around in the sand and cry a little bit. Do you think the Vulture will be some kind of father figure that's connected directly to his life, and then maybe we'll end with a funeral? Like every other Spider-Man movie? Mm, Let's say no. I hope not. I think they've, they've learned their lessons. I'd like to hope. The last, the last scene, the last shot of it was pretty cool. Yeah, I'm seeing Tony and... Spidey swinging by yeah. and then Tony right behind him. And he's in the same armor that he was wearing in Civil War. But then the thing we see before that is um, the Staten Island Ferry. Oh, that was been... a cool shot. I get no credit for knowing it's the Staten Island Ferry. You get some credit for it. Okay, it said thanks. Staten Island Ferry on it. Did it? Oh, yeah. damn. I was <laughs> just like, look, I, I broke the trailer down. I did better on this than the, the monkey one. I'm like... There's a monkey with some humans. It's also... Like, That's weird, right? I'm 99% certain it says Staten Island Ferry on it. Also, it's not like it's... An unknown ferry. It's unknown. It's not an unknown, but what other ferry do you know of in New York City? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, you, I guess you've got me there. The bear! What's that new a ferry? No comment. <laughs> Ferryman comes for you. I don't know, man. The ferryman comes for you. What is this? The River Styx? Yes. That's what this basement is. You need is. two coins. Cow. Yeah, you need two coins. To get a... What if you didn't have two coins? You just like wait on the other side of the river and just kind of like chill? 
oh, we see Mary Jane really quickly, or what the character we assume is Mary Jane when they're checking out Liz Allen. They're like, we haven't seen her with that sweater skirt combination. We should stop staring. Mary Jane's just like, losers. I like it. I like it already. That's it. Yeah, I guess that was all the the little things that I found. There was a phone number on the side of a building. I tried to look it up. It didn't seem to be a thing. That's about it. I guess Marissa Tomei is there. Looking good. Rawr. Yes. Keeping in the Christmas spirit. Oh, there's no Christmas um, spirit. You sucked it out of my life with this. Uh, you wouldn't tell me what it was last week. I come into your home, I even which you me. hadn't cleaned for me to come over, by the way. I cleaned all day. That's true. You did make some really fancy shelves. Um, with the help of your, uh, your old your... man. But if there's anything I'd like to say to you tonight, is, it's it, the, so, is it sorry? It's that I'd like to wish you a turtle's Christmas. No. <laughs> now might be a really good time for you to get angry. That's my secret. I'm always angry. It's time for an editor's note podcast review. Oh my god, this is the worst. It. Oh my lord. So for those who don't know, and you probably don't. In all fairness, tonight we watched a movie. Neither one of us have ever seen it before tonight, and we'll never watch it again. No. <laughs> we watched a Ninja Turtles Christmas special called We Wish You a Turtles Christmas. So you wouldn't even, like, as you were typing it in, you wouldn't let me look at the screen. Yeah. So as you hit play, it popped up. What was the first thing that came out of my head, my mouth? I don't even know why you yelled at it. You didn't even know what it was. No, when it showed up, a very merry... Uh, we, no, we just said, like, Ninja Turtles. Teenage Ninja Turtles were like, no! Because you were telling me about how awful and terrible this was and how it was going to ruin it for me. And I see these ugly-ass, weak... It's like it's like they had $10,000 to make this Turtles special for you Christmas. You think they had $10,000? Well, I think you were being generous, Okay, sir. well, no. It's like they had $10,000 to make this Christmas special for the Turtles, and they spent $9,000 of it on crack cocaine, $500 on booze, and fucking, like, $750. And now they're over budget, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> But this movie, so like we, I've never seen it before. I took all my notes while we were watching it, which I think and took away from your ability to enjoy it. You're on your phone the whole time. It's <laughs> <That's> a, <good, laughs> a good point. Um, but before I did this, I went okay. Well, I don't really know this movie, but I'll try and you know find like I'll do some background research, get some fun facts that I could talk about in the show. There are none. There's nothing, man. Putrid. Well, there's like there's nothing on the there's stuff on the internet about it. Like there are people reviewing it, but I tried to find out like what is this? It's garbage. It just says like this came out in 1994. Okay, what other information is there? It was made by this production company. Like okay, great. Well, what has this production company done? They made this and they made Turtle Tunes. I don't know what that is. Don't look into it. Well, I'm, if it's any indication, yeah. it's probably the Whew. same bullcrap we just watched for 21 minutes. But I'm like, okay, well, who's the director? Let's look into this guy. He did this, and he did Turtle Tunes. I'm like, well, that's not helpful. That's it. That's all he's done. This came out in 94. This... And there's no information on this. They're like, the director's brother was one of the producers on Lord of the Rings. I'm like, that's, that has nothing to do with this. Yeah, because one was highly successful, <laughs> yeah. and one was a... <laughs> Garbage fire. So I have no idea how this came into being. It's a VHS. It was direct to VHS. It hasn't been. There's no DVD release of this, and you can find it on YouTube. But there's nothing out there. I have no idea how this came to be, or why. I think why is a much better question <laughs> than how. How? I'll tell you how. A bunch of people did some drugs, wrote some shitty Christmas songs put on some really bad turtle costumes, and film for 28 minutes. Oh, boy. For a 21-minute feature. So, this movie... In fact, um, probably less than that, because they use the same shots more than once. <laughs> no, I know what my favorite part is. Why don't you explain the plot of this movie? There is no plot. There is a... That's not true. There's, There's a, a very plot. thin plot. All right, it's Christmas Eve, and they're like, oh, yeah, uh, four hours to go, and we did all our Christmas shopping. All right. By the way, they have the shittiest New York accents. In fact, for one segment of the fucking movie, all right, Leonardo has a Jamaican accent. We're not there yet. We're not. But no, no, no. I'm just saying. 
these four green assholes are in the sewer bragging about getting their Christmas shopping done, and they didn't get anything for Shredder. So the Splinter. premise is Splinter. Easy does it. Shredder's Splinter. not in this. Splinter. I wish he had been, because what they I would have loved to have seen how they There's put no in the violence. costume. There's no. It's like it's terrible. Okay, the short version is the plot is. It's Christmas Eve, and the turtles have forgotten to get a gift for Splinter. They have to do that, and also there's barely any dialogue. They just sing their way through it. There are four turtles, and there are two voice actors. So right off the bat, you don't know who is who. <laughs> it all they all sound identical. And they it's all sound terrible. identical, and Leonardo and Donatello's headbands look the same color. Michelangelo, Raphael, same color. Yeah, that's, they don't have to do a good job. I hope you're reaching for more alcohol, because that's the only way to make this discussion tolerable. No, i got to look up the order of songs that happens. Oh, oh yeah. It, it, it's Because that's uh, the only way to actually tie this movie together, is the songs. Th- those songs? Oh, my God. I mean, well, no, the first one was... Uh, they're decorating a Christmas tree. Yeah, they're decorating a Christmas tree. And then Leonardo starts singing with a Jamaican accent. First song? No, that was the first... For a song. Yeah... Maybe? No, that was the second song. Oh, okay. What was the first song? I don't know. There's an advertisement. I can't get past it yet. Oh, well, that's what our show needs. <laughs> Advertising. Actually, that was the first one. Yeah. There, there's a quick song um, in the intro that was called We're the Turtles. Oh, yeah. Which I think is from um, the Coming Out of Their Shells tour. Yes, it was. They, so, they, I unrelated. I did some research where you were like looking at the laptop. Which, I, which I, did, I did have that on VHS as a child. I feel bad for my parents who had to suffer through me watching that. Um, But yeah, the first song is... They used the discipline on you. Misbehaving Zach, we're going to put in a movie coming out of their shells. But but it was like the making of the coming out of their shells. It's a whole other thing. So the first song, and because I don't think I'm going to get hit for copyright on this, because who the hell cares? I I won't play the whole thing, I promise. Get ready. We want people to listen to the show. (laughs) Get ready for a quick Turtles rendition of Deck the Halls. Santa Claus will bring his reindeer. In the sewer, I will Hope you're still with us here so, on the show. <laughs> so that was racist, right? <laughs> that was... Deck the Halls with Pepperoni. What yeah. the hell? What so who would decorate are, the halls with Are they pepperoni? Jamaican? Also, they're decorating a Christmas tree. They don't do anything. They just like twirl with lights. They get, oh, yeah, like, well, I think they're it, getting ready for ritualistic suicide to hang themselves with Christmas lights. Because I'm pretty sure I was ready to take the lights off of your tree and do it to myself. And they don't do anything. I would have bent like, down on the electrical wire and been like the cat in Christmas Vacation. And I don't think the people who wrote this knew anything about anything like not the show not the comics not the anything they're like merry christmas to the shredder I'm like, really? but then they all like look around like mm, maybe but, so like this is really oh, like bad offensive to jamaicans it's offensive to everybody this is horrible um boy i don't even remember all these songs that we so just after that they're like this. wrapping their presents well and no they're, they're like, like oh man i i got all the presents for the kids the kids will come back. That's a weird thing. Remember the children. No, the poor <laughs> um, children. Like we didn't get. A nobody gift. thought of the children when it came to making this movie. <laughs> nobody. The children didn't bother to learn the songs either. I bet we could make a better turtles movie in your basement. I bet we could. Um, but then they sing a song that called "Up from the Sewers." Cue it, clip guy. It's me. I'm the clip guy. I'm, I need to do this later. <laughs> I like how oh, you're the you you're the clip guy. It's a low budget operation. So they it's have like, to go it's up. Like the Just for Men Club. Not only am I the president, I'm a member. Not that I write the show. Oh, wait, I produce oh. it. I'm from the store. What is that? That's where they were going up. They were going up to the city street. Oh yeah, that's the one that was um, over the river and through the woods. Yeah. 
But like, this is a really like there's stairs going up from the sewer. This is a very hear. convoluted like yeah. stage they're on. And then, which by the uh, way, during this you can see zippers. Yeah, you so can see up the their con- masks. The, the cost- you can see the undershirts. <laughs> I love them. So the costumes themselves seem to be made of felt. There are some mechanics, and the mouths do move up and down. Not very often. At random, <laughs> and certainly the lip flaps don't match but, up with anything. Like, they'll just go when no one's talking. Even bigger than so that. So in the eyes. I love when Donatello's even... mask breaks in the middle of it, and he's just, like, hitting himself in the eyes trying to make it work. <laughs> even bigger. The biggest problem with, like, the costume, like, if you know, like, be bad. That they're just in sneakers? They're in sneakers! They don't even have turtle feet. They just have black sneakers. Uh, and then they make it's a like joke they got about four guys from Gold's Gym. <laughs> hey, you want to dress up as a turtle? And then they make a joke about the shoes at the end. They're like it's not even my size. Oh, you have three toes. You just have like size nine feet. Yeah, you're what wearing you, like what do you you're want? Black sneakers. Ah, oh, doesn't make any sense. So then, what's weird? They get topside, and um, then the same one. Gotta get a sh- gift for Shredder. Splinter. Gotta get okay, a splinter. Sl- like, gotta get a gift, gotta get a gift, gotta get a gift, gotta get a gift for Splinter. But you got like this, like... I was gonna put a clip there. Gotta get a gift, gotta get a gift, gotta get a gift, gotta get a gift, gotta get a gift for Splinter. How about a set of gold clubs? Splinter's not athletic. A bowling ball, some ice cakes. You guys are... Okay, I have to. But, like, the big part about this, you got young kids, like, in some back alley with fire center barrel playing, like, young stomp. They're, like, playing on, like, I love that the kids are, like, beating and... on their drums, yeah. which are in no way in time with the song. There are kids on roller skates going by. Like, no, they're roller blades. They were roller blades. I apologize. I'm... You should apologize. <laughs> and But I shouldn't apologize as much as the Turtles for molesting these children and just pushing them by the along way, their way, it's like New Year- it's Christmas Eve in New York City, and these kids are out rollerblading. Where are their parents? Well, I love that they get to the end of the song, and Raphael's like, "We only have two hours left until he crosses his arms." I just did that. You yeah. You. So we got two hours left to find a gift for Splinter. Oh yeah, one of them has a scarf. It's Michelangelo. Michelangelo. So you can actually, tell who the hell was who. Yeah. And then he's like, "We have two hours," and then it cuts to black. And then they show. Then, up on no, a no, street. this is a VHS. There, there's no commercial break. They just didn't have a good way to transition to the next scene. Or they were like anticipating there being a commercial break, yeah. maybe. But then they show up on a street corner. Three seconds later, it was like, it was like West 54th and Broadway. It was, it was on Broadway, which was weird. But then they're like, so three seconds ago, like, we have two. I, I need to stop crossing my arms. No one can see me do it. Like, we have two hours to get a gift for Splinter. And then it cuts to black. They go, we got one, one hour, hour to get a gift for Splinter. And they're like on the corner, like I think it was like West 54th and Broadway. And there's a, so like Times Square. Yeah, there's a Santa Claus just ringing a bell. Just just randomly there. This guy's probably like, hey, I need some uh, some wine money here. <laughs> oh, please, be in our Turtles movie. Oh, it's my big break. And then, Wrong. And then they're like, oh, he's got to be the opera guy. And Michelangelo starts singing opera. Yeah. That, yeah. Yes, that was the song. But what the hell? Then they try and pick him up in the middle. Oh, that's my favorite part. No, that this is my favorite, absolute favorite part of the movie. So Michelangelo, this is a movie that didn't have a take two. So Michelangelo <laughs> didn't have enough film in the in their camcorder. I no, we can't just skim by this because this is my favorite thing. Michelangelo was singing opera. And then I forget which two of them did because this is the scene where Donatello's yeah, but, mask. Yeah, but two is out of three chance of getting it right. Donatello's in the background, like banging on his eyes, trying to make them blink because so all the probably, mechanics are breaking. It's probably Raphael there. and Donatello, uh, Michelangelo. Leon. No, uh, Leonardo. Sorry. Yeah, Leonardo. Whatever, the other ones. So seemingly the plan is we're gonna pick Michelangelo up, just like support him by the thighs, put him on our shoulders in between the two of us, and they can't quite lift him. 
and then they give up. Yeah. And they don't, like, come back to it. They just get, like, oh, God, that's difficult. We really can't see out of these costumes very well, guys, so we're going to not pick them up. Can we also talk about the fake snow? Also, no take two. No take two. <laughs> we don't have enough. They steal Santa's bell that he's ringing on the corner. For whatever reason, isn't Santa kind of busy on Christmas Eve? Apparently not. Stand on stand on Broadway and ring my bell. Not in the nineties. One of these freak turtle kids. Uh, but then apparently they buy gifts for Splinter. We don't see it because it just likes to cut to black in this movie. Yes. And then they're like, we bought him all these gifts. And like, we bought him these six yo-yos. And I just he's like, holding five. Like, there aren't six there. It's five you're, yo-yos. You're bad at math, turtles. This I guess because you don't get the public education system in New York. This is totally teenage gift giving, though. They do get this right. And then they cut to black again. Yeah, but this is reason. teenage gift giving at its best. Because the turtles all get him gifts that they, that want. they want. Yeah. If This is what I like, and everyone likes it. And then Splinter comes in. Splinter looks like a wombat that got I run over by I don't know what a... he is. He, he, he's not he's a like, rat. He's, no. He's He just has like... He looks like something with rabies. He looks like a Q-tip that someone would find in Dune. He looks like a feral cat with rabies. It's bad. But not as bad as the next three and a half minute sequence. He looks like if Alvin and the Chipmunks all had five generations of incest. That's a good one. I, I'm going to find it hard to beat that one. He looks like Clifford the Big Red Dog got beat and then painted brown. He looks like somebody just took some, like they went down to like Joanne Fabrics or they went down to the craft store and they bought some like, uh, some fur, some fake fur and they wrapped it around like a plaster mold. He looks like the You're inside, too hard. he looks like the inside out anus of the good luck dragon from the never ending story. You win, you win, you win. We're going down. <laughs> And he coughed up a hairball. Oh, and boy. Was Splinter. Um, but boy, Splinter's weird. And then along with That's being <laughs> generous. And then along with Splinter, there's just a bunch of kids there now. But they will multiply. So I'm pretty sure these turtles are also kidnappers. Or they all got it on with April and Neil and it's their weekend with. That's also a possibility. Um, actually, no. We, we jumped ahead a little. Before Splinter gets there... We decide to be a little more culturally insensitive and have the rap rap. Oh, we forgot about the rap rap. <laughs> yes, we, can we forget about it again? Splinter, I'm looking at a picture. Splinter looks like Albert Einstein, like just bathed in like hair, like just for men hair club product. When I say the rap rap, I mean they are rapping about rapping presents. It's the rap rap. It's Christmas Eve and all my friends are here. Wrapping up presents, it happens once a year. I do my best when I'm wrapping my gifts. I take a lot of pride when I put the gift inside of the rap rap. Rap rap. Yeah, come on, say it again, y'all. The rap rap. Rap rap. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't really go anywhere either. Like, they just keep on going like, it's a rap rap. Okay? It's a rap rap. Ah, uh, boy. I mean, that's the most nothing song in here, and that's saying a lot. And this is only like 23 minutes. I loved how you would pause as we were watching it. <laughs> Sporadically, like, well, how much time is left? There's still a long way to go in this. Uh, but then Splinter shows up, and they do. And I think this covers seven minutes of, like, the 23. Oh, my God. The that's... fall 12 days of Christmas. Ugh. And this is the laziest part of the movie. Because they use the same shots. Over, it's the four manhole covers and like the three four, skateboards. Four manhole covers, three skateboards, two. What was the two? Uh, I don't know. But Splinter a, also forgets the lyrics. It's a pizza by the end with of the movie. a pepperoni. Yeah, and and that pizza with pepperoni. It's really bad. Five video games. Also, Splinter yes. is a kind of terrible Asian character. So, they got them num- uh, They got them chopsticks and kimonos. Yep. And narrow uh, neckties, so I guess Splinter's a hipster. Hold on. 12 days of Turtle Christmas. Uh, do, do you want to sing the whole 12? No, I'm just going to... Uh, 
Let's oh, see. what other ad came oh, up? Oh no, it phone? brings up brings up turtle dove. That's not what I want. <clears throat> oh yeah, twelve days of Christmas. Here we go. Oh no, we can do the whole twelve. Oh man, because I gotta scroll around. It was twelve April. No, we're not, gonna, we're not gonna sing it. No, I will. Twelve April Neal autographs. Eleven pairs of sneakers. Ten yellow yo-yos. Even though they're only five. Eight chopsticks. Seven silk kimono. Six frisbees. Five, five video games. Four <laughs> metal covers. Three skateboards. Two comic books. And a pizza with pepperoni. <laughs> the show has hit. A new low. <laughs> they keep on doing. And ever we were watching it, I just kept on like yelling with. Don't do it, movie. So much. Don't do it, movie. <laughs> They're like four manhole covers. Same shot as like the last yeah. eight. Please skate like, ah, like, the same shot. Stop using the same shot. You didn't shoot that much footage. Just give me an establishing shot. I don't even care. You know how the we. You <laughs> we know how just I know hang the, on it. You know how I, I know care. the podcast hit a new low tonight. We sang the 12 Dirt Turtle Days of Christmas on it. <laughs> but what's worse is I had to scroll up because Splinter forgets the lyrics. And when I was looking at the lyrics, that they show him forgetting uh, it. They're like, I'll never catch up now. 12 April O'Neill autographs. Oh, I'll never catch up now. Eight. No, no. No. Seven. Oh, whatever. Good thing I was on, on my game. Five video games. Made it. Four, and then he finishes the song. But like. The character forgot the lyrics. On the third day of Christmas, the turtles gave to me twelve April O'Neil autographs. Oh, I'm gonna catch up now. Eight and a half percent. Oh, where am I? Five video games made it. Four manhole covers, three skateboards, two comic books, and a pizza with pepperoni. And then they sing, We Wish You a Turtle Christmas, where there are just... Nonsense. A, a dozen odd children in there? Yeah. Where did the kids come from? There was a kid with a turtleneck what, and a mullet. Why do they know where the turtle's lair is? There's a kid is? wearing sweatpants up to his armpits. Did they steal these children? Pits. And my favorite is, none of the kids know the lyrics. There's the one kid who was air humping the chain link <laughs> fence. Um, I think he was practicing being a stripper. Hey, it's New York City, man. Oh, and then Splinter... But the Splinter finishes, like, the 12 Days of Christmas with a quick Heil Hitler. Just shoots his arm right up. And Pepperoni! <laughs> like, that was a weird moment. Yeah, well. Thanks, Splinter. <laughs> this is what I wrote for my notes. Release the children! <laughs> they just have stolen children that they're making sing. We wish you a turtle's grace. credits roll and this was a painful at this point we were watching the credits to see if mirage was involved yeah, somehow mirage licensed this but so like I said, this is about a 23 minute movie it ended at about minute 20 21 yeah and then it was just black and like i said this is only two voice actors so it's just these two guys going back and forth pretending to be four turtles and I think they're on drugs. They might be. One of the last things is, hey. No, yeah. the last line, and I wrote this down. So they're going like all back and forth. They're like, hey, you got me those shoes that don't fit. And blah, blah, We already mentioned that. Because I have three toes. And this goes on like way too long. There aren't any credits. This is just black at this yeah. point. And the last line is that the turtle goes like, hey, give me some of that. Like, Are they, are they passing around weed? Are these turtles so high? <laughs> like the last thing they do is a drug joke. This thing is god awful. It's terrible. It's horrific. I can't believe I endured all 21 minutes of it. Usually I give things the benefit of the doubt. No, no. No, no. This. No. There is no excuse. There is no. It's got. It's terrible. Listeners, I challenge you find a worse Christmas special. Have, no, no, have you ever seen anything worse than this for a Christmas special? 
it's right up there with the Star Wars Christmas special. <laughs> Santa Claus 3, the one with... Although, YouTube automatically sent us into the Power Rangers Christmas special. And then we turned it right off. That's because we made a smart decision. Oh, boy. This was... Bad. 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 But I guess that's... We find wish a... you eternal Christmas. Find us something harder to watch. Or... Yeah, is there a harder to watch Christmas special out there? I'm not convinced there is. Tweet at us. Let us know. Boy. But that, so on our patented rating system of see it in theaters, impossible for this. Red box it, also impossible. Or don't waste your time. Uh, you know what? YouTube it. Because you need to see this to see how bad it is. It is like... I guess it's only 20... No, I can't recommend it. I won't do it. It's it's like so cringeworthy. It's, it's like... It's a, it's a train wreck. You don't want to watch, but you can't look away. Um, or play a drinking game with it. Every time something's terrible, take a drink. And if we're not responsible for any <laughs> alcohol poisoning or trips to the ER you may need. Boy, this was... <laughs> you know what? It's unique. Would you rather watch that or Terminator Genesis? I would rather watch this. Because it was 21 minutes. <laughs> yeah, because I didn't have to suffer. This is going to be a new game we play every week. Would you rather watch that or Terminator Genesis? The answer will always be anything else. No, there was actually a couple that you were like, I might watch Terminator Genesis. Yeah, over... Um, Would you watch the 1994 Fantastic Four yes. again? Okay, there it is. That's That says... A lot. Oh, that's right. You said you'd rather watch Terminator Genesis over uh, Transformers movie. High bar. Moving on. Uh, don't watch this. Or do. I. Whatever. It's a good example. One. All right, we're moving on. Here's your letters to the editors. To submit your questions, email us at editorsnotecomics at gmail.com. Boy, this one actually had some thought put into it. Um, actually, all of our letters have thought put into them. <laughs> nice recovery. <laughs> so I will read it in its entirety when I could really, I could always condense this one to like one sentence like I usually do. But I won't. <clears throat> Dear editors, do you believe that comics have a place in the classroom? I heard that many educators have had success using comics as a teaching aid. The teachers were not using comics just for reluctant readers. Comics were used for the whole classroom. The classroom curriculum used comics as instructional tools to improve learning, critical thinking skills, and to keep students engaged. I was surprised that comics were used for many age ranges in a broad subject such as elementary education, dealing with grief, and Black History Month. Do you have any suggestions on how parents can use comics at home to supplement their children's education? Any series you would recommend to them? Here are a couple of articles to read before you respond. I didn't do that. I didn't read the bottom of this email. Oh, well, there you go. Hello. Well, thank you for the thoughtful letter. <laughs> There's a... There's just like five links at the bottom that I didn't know were there until I got there. This person has done a lot of research on the subject. I didn't. Well, obviously not. So, condensed version. Do comics have a place in the classroom? How can they be used? And do you have any suggestions how parents can supplement the use of comics in the home? I would say absolutely. I think comic books can have a place in the classroom. God, this is real. Um, if... Why not? Well, I mean... I, I think, look at some graphic novels. I mean... It depends. It depends on the age range. I don't think I would do it as... If you're using it to supplement reading, absolutely. I think the if I was going to use it educationally, I probably would do it the earliest 10 and over. There's certainly a lot of stuff you can use to... And I have parents who come into the shop all the time like, oh, I want to get my kid into reading. They're not that interested, so I'm going to try comics. I get that a lot. But if you're going to try stuff that's going to be educational, I would probably say 10 and above. And there are some books out there that are specifically designed to be about retelling history, which, I mean, honestly, it depends on what you're looking for. But there are plenty of books out there that are just historical retellings that you can use. But, I mean, ultimately, comics are immediate. They're all artists. Artists trying to tell stories, and unfortunately, a lot of times, deadlines might affected depending on if you're doing a monthly title or something you have time to work on but everyone's just trying to tell the best story they can everyone has allegories everyone has a purpose in telling their story everything has well they'll come back to art like, art should always be appreciated and comics are no different and they'll come back to like the seven basic stories of literature you know like defeating the monster or getting home or you know something like the you know the seven basic stories and you can have, can have deconstructions of 
every single one of those. And you can also have things that are absolutely ridiculous. It doesn't... I think that they'd be a, they're a great supplement in the classroom. You know, they can't be a total substitute for actual, like, pros and... Um... Oh, they totally can. Totally. You think they'd be a, a complete substitute for pros? I mean, not across the board. I would never say no, that I across mean, you, the board. But yeah. could you sit down mm. and study a book? Yeah, abs- oh, I'm, uh, yeah absolutely. Yeah. No, I don't. What I And when I'm thinking about this question, I'm thinking more in terms of general public education. Because, I mean, versus throw a stone on any college campus, you'll find a, like, studying comics, blah, blah, blah. And, yeah, those are great. But I mean more of, like, 12 and, like grades 12 and under. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would say introduce kids into different styles of reading. I don't know if I would necessarily recommend something like doing like a Watchmen that's a deconstruction of the genre, but you can certainly find other books that are dealing with certain allegories or things a little more directly dealing with real life figures. Or you can do something that's aged to younger kids or even do foreign language books. Give a kid a Tin Tin. Give it, well, I was going to say give a kid. A Spanish version of Walking Dead. Don't do that. Change my mind there. Because <laughs> those exist. Well, but I think that it's it's a great. It could be a great learning tool, and I think it could be something that helps supplement what you're doing in the classroom. It, it, it's better. It, you know, sometimes you make jokes like, "Oh, does the book have pictures in it?" Then I'm not going to bother. But it's such a combination, and it's such a great cross-platform collaboration. Yeah, give everyone knows Batman. Give. A high school classroom, and we, we haven't done it on the show because the last time I gave you one of the grades, you, you blew it. <laughs> Give a kid a Are dark... you talking about that Star Trek book I was supposed to read? Yes, the Star Trek one. That one was one of the greats. No, what do you mean, the Watchmen? I meant Watchmen. Um, Someday I'll read it with the due process. I just, I just did that. I, I did it over like the course of a month. It takes time. You got to sit down and read it slow. They gave it to me for a week. <laughs> no. I'm like, this is the most complicated book in comic history. Read it in four days. <laughs> yeah. But give a kid a Dark Knight Returns and talk about what that story is. Like, a man a man going up against his own insecurities and over the course of four books literally is going up against God. Mm. Something that builds something that's... In, oh, yeah, absolutely. I and mean, at this point, every form of media, every form of entertainment, which includes literature, whether... Everything's disposable, or you can take the time to look at it. Yeah. I think of comics like the way you could look at an art museum. You can have someone who can just cruise through there, like, on a brisk, like, 45 minutes. Yeah, I saw all the pictures, and, you know, those are some nice pictures. Or you can take the time to study it. I I can't help but, but agree with you. I think it's a great, it can be a great tool. I don't think it is the end all and be all. I don't think it should be a total replacement. But I think we're in a a day and an age where evil needs to get punched in the throat. Damn straight. All right. Where can we find you? Oh, at my store, Editor's Note Comics at 210 Water Street in downtown Hollowell. It is warm. It is sunny. It is sunny. You're you're so full of shit. (laughs) It's like sunny, but it's not warm. (laughs) It's so cold. Foot traffic, I miss you. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. If you have the opportunity, I'm saying this to you too, retweet the show. Oh, oh okay. Yes, son of a bitch. Oh, wow. <laughs> My mom thinks I'm funny. Actually, I don't even know if that's true. <laughs> but she at least listens. Does um, your mom think I'm funny? Does Karen like me on the show? I, I don't know. Do you talk to your mom about me being on the show? She, Is she like, oh, who's your nice little sidekick there? She's what a, a good friend. <laughs> she's aware of you. I know she's aware of me. But yeah, you know, spread the word if you can. Much We're... love, Karen. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> you just pounded your chest like a tool. <laughs> Such a tool. Where you at? At Junior Rich on Twitter. Ah, <laughs> uh, next week, man. We're gonna... Something that's not gonna be total garbage. <laughs> we're kicking the Christmas spirit away. And we no, are... we're not. No, we're not. We're embracing the season of giving because we're... Being given new Star Wars. Yeah, man. And the premiere was last night, and you know, everyone who was there, it's a little bit of a skewed perspective, I'm sure, but all the news coming out of it, some positive vibes. Yeah, baby! Uh, let's see how you steal those Death Star plans and put them in a robot, and boy, that universe sure could have used email. That's uh, 
Could have used an encrypted attachment. Just a little uh, Snapchat. <laughs> I'm going to snap you the Death Star plans. Ten seconds is not enough time. Oh, what are you doing screenshotting it? I can... Well, I know you did it. Mon Mothma took a screenshot. Is that still... I don't use Snapchat anymore. <laughs> this will be our Christmas episode, too. Oh, no. We'll have one more holiday after that. One more day to celebrate cheer. Well, no, but like this is like the mostly, last... Ep- mostly Star Wars cheers. will be the last episode that drops before the Christmas holiday. Yeah, but we'll still have one holiday episode after that. Christmas cheers will turn into Christmas jeers. I'll be drinking some Christmas beers. Good night, everyone. And, I don't know. Merry Christmas. Thanks for coming out. Ho, ho, ho. Thanks for coming out. <laughs> I don't know, are you, man. You're the guy, you're going to host lame-ass Christmas parties. I should ask you, how's the uh, how's the Editor's Oak Comics Christmas party going to be this year? The, Christmas, the staff Christmas party. Drunk. <laughs> party of one. See you next week. Hey, whose idea was it to come up with totally mildly Jamaican stuff? I like that Rastafarian kind of stuff. Who do you think this stuff was? It was my stuff, man. Come on. Oh, yeah. Who else but somebody like Leonardo could think of something like that? Well, I got to tell you, it was totally cool, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, I think so too, Mikey, man. How about that 12 days, though, man? Did that go on for, like, 12 years or what? What are you talking about, uh, my son? Oh, sorry, Master Splinter. I mean, it was, like, the best song of the whole thing. Uh, uh, matter of fact, I'll, I'm gonna play it right now. Well, you know, we really like the kids helping us out on uh, getting a gift for Splinter and, and, and singing We Wish You a Turtle's Christmas. I mean, that was really nice. It was very Christmassy. How about some of my favorites, like, uh, Rap Rap? Was that something awesome or what, man? Hey, that was some Christmas tree, though, wasn't it? Oh, man, it was, like, totally awesome! And what was with that pair of sneakers you got me? They were a little too small for my feet, and I only have three toes, thank you very much. Oh, come on, man, I'm trying to do the best I can. It was like, you know, last-second shopping. That's about, like, all they had left. You ever tried to go out and buy a sneaker with two toes? Uh, the lady almost, like, laughed me out of Macy's, man. Come on, Leo! Hey, you know, I really like that Donatello watch. That sold, like, hotcakes, like... Totally happening this Christmas. Oh, man, I got one on right now, but it, it, wait a minute. I think it stopped, man. What's going on out there, man? Hey, give me some of that.